All right. Excellentante. Okay, so we're going to get started. I'm going to have uh, you three come on up. So um, last week, I think it was Tuesday, we used our cell phones to do what? Take some pictures, right? To take pictures of our eyes, to kind of uh, give us a reminder of our commitment to engage this Lens of Christ uh, mission or challenge. And I started thinking about that when we were, after we, when I took my picture, Elaine right here actually took my picture. And um, when she took my picture and gave it back to me, it got me to thinking about something. It got me to thinking about how pictures create this snapshot uh, in your life, right? Like they sort of freeze this moment in time in your life. Um, but then like as soon as that moment is over, like sec a second after that snapshot is taken, you're totally already different, right? Like the second after I took that picture, as, as much as I stood there and took the picture, the second after the picture was taken, I was different. Uh, and so what that kind of, I don't know, symbolized to me was that's kind of what life is. It's a combination of snapshots that make up important, important and sort of informing memories in our life. Uh, but then life is still moving. Life is still in process. And, and so you're going to kind of see that today. You see these picture frames up here uh, because what we're going to experience today is the campus ministries team is gonna share their stories with you. They're gonna share both the moments that are locked and the moments that are still moving. Um, it's part of their first assignment uh, for the Lens of Christ Challenge, and then they're gonna relate their story to some biblical uh, person or event. Um, and they're gonna do it uh, with great courage. What I want you to do today, everybody, is give them your utmost undivided attention. Amen? I don't, that wasn't good enough. Amen? Amen? Amen. So that means put your phone away unless you're going to try to capture something incredible happening. Resist answering that email. You don't want to read it anyway. Snapchat, you can wait. It'll be gone, which means God didn't want you to see it anyway. <laughs> uh, whatever's happening on your social network, it can wait. That text can wait. All of that can wait because what we want you to do is really give each other um, your undivided attention today. Sound good? First, you're going to hear uh, from a cello trio featuring Julia Fieser, Christy Gifford, and freshman Bryson Dodds. <laughs> uh, and then everybody's going to introduce themselves as they tell their story. Will you please give them one more hand?
Wow. Can you guys give them another hand, please? That was phenomenal. Yeah, there you are. Way to go. So, uh, as you can see, my name is Jonathan Hillis, and um, I joined the worship team pretty late notice, but it was awesome that I got to be on the team. And uh, tell you a little bit about me and my story, how I got here um, to Warner. I have to go back to uh, a time where I had a crush on this girl, and um, I put a lot into it. And as a result, I realized I was really missing out on a lot of my life and what um, God is wanting for me. And um, I was challenged by some leaders and by God to really let it go. And I let that relationship go completely. And the story of it all, there's a lot of details, and I'd love to tell you if you ever want to hear the full story. But as a result of letting it go and pursuing God, I experienced God like I had never imagined. Um, a comfort and um, in the midst of loneliness that I can't even describe. And um, one of the coolest parts about that story is now she is my wife, which is pretty cool. So I can tell you more about it later, but yes, thank you, Lord, for that one. <laughs> if you know my wife, she's amazing. Um, wherever she is, she's out here somewhere. Um, so from there, um, I've just been in this journey um, now. Um, where if I look at my life through the lens of Christ, like what we're doing, um, President Cook talked last week about the prodigal son story. And um, for me, it's not so much that I relate so much to the prodigal son, but actually to the son who stayed. Um, and he harbored a lot of bitterness and judgment towards other people and, and saying, like, they didn't do it the way that he thought they should. And... Um, I have just, for some reason, I think in my upbringing and being in a Christian family, um, I've, I've had that judgment and I've had to overcome that mentality that there's a way to do it and like this is how it needs to be. Um, and that's the thing God's really working on me is letting go of that criti criticalness um, and loving everybody right where they're at. And um, I, I would like to do that to you and ask that you do that with me as well. Um, my family. Has, is spread all over the world, um, or all over um, USA. I have some family in Texas and Los Angeles, and um, it's lots of steps and halves, and um, pretty mixed family. And uh, but I love them, and we're we're uh, trying to do family together. But I'm here in Portland. I transferred here last uh, semester, so I'm still pretty new here. Um, so I'd love to meet you. And um, studying social entrepreneurship, which is awesome. Any any of you guys out there? Hey, um, and uh, I'm really thankful to be here. So next is uh, going to be Molly, who's going to speak. Um, she wants to come up here. Where is she? Oh, there you are. Thank you, Jonathan. Okay, so my story is a little ironic because I grew up in a household with uh, Jesus being a focus, but in a really weird way. My dad was a Catholic, and my mom despised Catholics. So <laughs> I grew up kind of afraid of God, and they always said, go with what you want, but do what I want. So, you know, when you get to the rebelling stage where you want to take them off anyway, I decided to go a completely different direction and convert to Judaism. So for like a month of my life, I went to a temple. And I went home, and I said, you know what, Mom and Dad? I'm Jewish. And they said... We don't really care. And I, said, <laughs> and I said, oh, well. And high school came, and I realized maybe I should have a faith because I want to be in the faith. So I decided to just give it a shot, and I went to a non-denominational church, which was actually worse for my parents than going to a temple. And I fell in love with Jesus, and I realized that on my own terms I could find my faith. And that was the most beautiful thing of all. I found what true love feels like. I found what true relationship and community feels like. And I came to Warner wanting nothing more than to build community around the love of Christ that I found. Warner quickly said, slow down. You don't know what you're talking about quite yet. And they taught me that you have to be Christ-centered before you bring in a love-centered community. And I didn't really know what that meant. I was like, I do have love. That's Christ-centered, right? 
but I was pulling in people to the love, just like my parents were, instead of projecting out the love. And I'm still learning exactly what that means. And I find myself asking a lot of questions, like the disciple Peter did, to the point where maybe Jesus is one gonna, gonna tell me, you know what, just stop asking questions, go home and rest. No, but really stop. <laughs> but I'm figuring it out. And if you guys have a voice that you want to share with me and project your love, I would love to hear it. And we can project together. Hey. Um, Josh Lawrence is also part of the chapel team, but he can't be here today. So um, I'm sure he'd love to share his story with you later uh, at another time. Um, my name is Jonathan Schuler. I, uh, from this little rock in the middle of the Pacific Ocean called the Big Island, Hawaii. Any Islanders here? Any Hawaiians? No? Oh, there we go. There's one. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I'm from a family of three, my parents and I, really simple place. Uh, grew up on the Big Island all my life. I've uh, been there ever since until I came to college here at Warner. Um, what brought me here was uh, the lovely Kara Mace. I was at a college fair. And uh, I saw her in the back of the room, and I said, I have to talk to her. She's gorgeous. Um, <laughs> so I did, and then I was like, okay, I might as well find out about the school uh, while I'm at it. And I actually kind of liked it. So I love Portland. So I was like, might as well <laughs> go, to, go to Warner. So that's what brought me here. And uh, <laughs> one, of the, one of the biggest things that's uh, changed my spiritual life is just being here uh, with all you lovely people. Um, all of the great Jesus people around here just really bring me closer to God. And, uh, you know, going to Warner Bros. every week with Jay Schwartz over there, leading it, just killer. Um, hopefully I'll see some of you guys there later. Uh, tonight, actually. Anyway, um, less shameless advertising. Uh, I guess one of the questions that um, I ask myself uh, spiritually is, like, what's the best way to, you know, get in contact with God, worship God? Uh, and sometimes it's, you know, just chilling in the forest with a guitar, just noodling around, uh, listening to the trees and the wind. Other times it's being up on stage with all of my friends playing worship music uh, and helping everybody worship themselves. Um, and uh, I guess the big biblical figure that um, resonates with me the most, uh, like Mr. Hillis over here, is also the prodigal son. Um, I lived sort of a different life back in, back in the islands. The island life isn't always the best life. Uh, it's a little different, but um, every time I come back from Warner out here, go back home, uh, I hope to be just like a better person, um, just being that prodigal son, being better and better every time. Uh, and yeah, and we're gonna play you a song with the lovely, talented Everardo over here and uh, Jonathan Hillis. Um, it's something called 10,000 Reasons.
Good morning. Well, my name is Gabrielle Wolpert. I'm from Portland, Oregon. Um, <laughs> um, I have been born and raised here. Um, I went to Park Rose High School and graduated in 2011. Um, my dream was to go to Bible college and uh, study God's Word and all that fun jazz. Um, but God, he kind of told me differently and he, um, he led me to Mount Hood Community College where I didn't want to go. Um, so I kind of felt like, okay, Lord, I, I have this desire to, to know you and to know more about you, um, but you're not letting me do that in the way that I want to do. Um, so my first couple years of college were pretty lonely. Um, I came from a high school where it wasn't too big and I was on sports teams, so I had a lot of community. I was close with my coaches and I went to a huge community college where I didn't know anyone, teachers, you know, they weren't really involved like I was hoping. Um, and so I kept asking myself, Lord, what, like, what are you, what am I going to get out of this? Um, and every time I would ask that, he would say, just, just wait, like I have something for you. Like, just lean on me, trust me. Um, so I guess the first two years were definitely, it's for finding time of God saying, okay, come on, come back to me. And, um, like, I have something in store for you, but you have to trust me. Um, so as humans, it's really hard to trust, especially God, when we're not looking at him face to face. Um, but that taught me a lot about my faith and what faith is and how, um, even if I can't see God right here, like I'm seeing all of you guys, um, he's totally here. He's present. He's, he's with me always. Um, so that was a huge learning curve. Then I came to Warner and then I understood, okay, that's why you had me go to community college. And that's why you let me feel alone because now I, I've experienced that and I can say like, like you can get through loneliness and, and just unhappiness. Um, I think one of the um, one of the Bible characters that I would relate most with, and I think a lot of us can re relate with him, is uh, Peter, one of Jesus' disciples. Um, I was reading about him last night a little bit, and um, Peter he loved he loved Jesus. They were they were friends. He walked with him and and did ministry with him, um, but he also fell short and he failed Christ multiple times. Um, and so I, within, I mean, this is all the really, really fast version of my story, but um, in those first couple of years of college, I kind of, I started to see myself as not this, this perfect, um, not, not that I thought I was perfect, but I started to see where I struggle and where my weaknesses are, and that was really hard. Um, and I felt like I wasn't maybe even good enough to be loved by Christ. Um, but Jesus kept calling me back to him, and that's what he did with Peter. He said, I'm, I'm going to love you even in the midst of your failures, and even in the midst of your sin, and I'm going to continue. I'm choosing to die for you. I already chose that a long time ago. Um, and so for me, I feel like Jesus is continuing to choose me and continuing to choose to mold and shape me into the woman that he has call, he's called me to be. Um, so that's kind of exciting. It doesn't mean it's always easy or fun because life isn't always fun. But in the midst of hard times, I feel like I've really um, come to know who is God and who is he to me. Um, yeah, that's, that's me. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, guys. I'm Ryan. Um, I've lived in Portland uh, my whole life. I'm the uh, youngest of four boys, so yeah, <laughs> that that was um, kind of uh, an interesting uh, way to grow up, being the youngest and you know always being picked on and, and stuff. Um, but I was very blessed um, to live in the family that I did. It was very loving and comforting, and um, we. Um, I was in a family that grew up going to church every Sunday, and I was very thankful for that. Um, but about 10 years ago, um, this feeling crept into my life that was suffocating, and it wasn't until a few years later that I realized that was depression. 
and that um, a great question that I've always reflected on about spirituality is how um, to live a Christian life while living with depression and like trying to find that peace and that place of rest in Jesus and um, you know it's been a 10 year like journey so far and I'm still trying to find that answer um, but one of the most life changing moments for me in my spirituality uh, was within my first year at Warner Pacific um, because I was just coming out of a very deep place of depression and um, in particular uh, Dr. Arthur Kelly's spirituality character and service class uh, really changed my life um, reading about Parker Palmer and coming out of that dark place with a sense of hope and community service and that was really a transforming moment for me and to really live um, how I thought God should God thought you know that I should live with this this happiness of you know being a Christian and being in this world and making connections um, with others and um, so uh, before coming to Warner um, you know, it wasn't my first choice to be here. Like, you know, I was, I really wanted to go to U of O and I applied there and it was accepted and I was so happy. But I was so, like, worried about being in this place that I didn't know anyone and didn't have any support that I had it, it, um, here, like, in Portland. So I stayed here and it was, going to Warner has been the most, like, important decision I think I've ever made and it's really been changing me um, and how I view different cultures and traditions. Um, so, if I were to relate myself to a Bible character, I think that that would be David. Because the story of David and Goliath really, you know, as a kid, it really inspires you to, you know, fight your, your battles and struggles that we all have. You know, we are all dealing with our own issues. You know, we have all had experiences that, that we're dealing with. And to just take that image of, you know, li little, little David, you know, with a slingshot going after Goliath, you know, that gives you a lot of courage and shows you that with um, perseverance you can really um, you know, achieve anything. And with God on your side, that really makes that a lot helpful. So, thank you. Hello, I am Miranda Henderson. I am a sister to two younger brothers and two puppies. And um, I am originally from Tacoma, Washington. I went to church every Sunday with my mom's side of the family, and um, they were Catholic. But I went to church thinking, okay, this is another Sunday that I have to wake up early. Like, why can't I just sleep in? So I didn't really pay attention. And um, it wasn't until I was 13 that my life had changed, and my mom decided that we were going to move to Tigard, Oregon. And I said, no, like, what are you doing? I have all my friends and all my cousins, all my family here. I'm going to go to a completely new state not knowing anyone. And um, that's when also my dad was in and out of my life. Um, he was in prison, so I didn't have a relationship with him at all. Um, I stopped going to church because my mom worked seven days a week, and um, it was just my brothers and I always at home. So I had to be the parent figure to my younger brothers. And then freshman year of high school, my dad came back, and he decided to, to what I thought, control my life. And I questioned, why are you here? You never decided to have a relationship with me in the beginning, and all of a sudden you think you can come control my life. Of course, I'm 14, so I think everyone's trying to control my life. Um, so I didn't have a relationship with God at all. Um, I didn't go out of my way to try to find him. I didn't have friends that encouraged it. Um, I just focused on school. And it was also the same time that I um, had my first relationship. And it was um, four years long. And so it was until last year that I went through this breakup. And um, very few people knew about it. And um, very few people could help me cope with it. And so I decided, well, before that, actually, senior year, I did not want to go to school at all. I wanted to go to beauty school. And my, um, one of my teachers decided to make the AXIC scholarship, was, which is here at Warner. He decided to make an assignment because he heard that I wasn't going to go to school. So I decided, OK, well, I need to pass this class. I need to get an A. So I filled out the scholarship, and it brought me here to Warner. And um, I was like, oh, no, what did I do? Because I was like, I heard Warner is a Christian or a Christ-centered school. 
and um, I don't know anything about God. I didn't feel like I was going to fit in. And so that's when I was going through my breakup, and um, I had a mentor who had talked to me and asked me, what makes you happy? And to this day, I still can't answer that question. And um, I decided, since I couldn't really talk to anyone, or I couldn't feel comfortable enough to, I said, well, let me give this whole talking to God and letting him take control of whatever is happening. Let me see what that's about. And um, it happened. I'm not in that relationship anymore. I'm at peace with that relationship. I don't regret anything about it. But um, I definitely would say that when I asked God for help, I realized that he's always been there. I just never seeked him, and I never asked for help. I just ignored him, and he gave me all the signs. And then, um, you know, I'm still on this journey of finding out who I am and what makes me happy. But I can definitely say that God has always been there for me, and I just have to push myself just a little bit more. And Warner's definitely helping me in that way. And a biblical figure, I'm going to be honest, I've never read the Bible, ever. Um, and I actually emailed Michelle about this assignment. I said, Michelle, I don't know what to say. I'm really nervous. I mean, I'm shaking right now. But um, she gave me a few options, and I read one. And um, Esther, um, she was thrust into a big world. And she could have been comfortable with just hiding behind everything, which, is, which relates to me because I could just have came to Warner and just kept doing my own thing and not trying to make community or building my relationship with God. But she decides to do the opposite of that. And I feel like this year, that's what my goal is and what I'm working on. And I'm excited. And I would love if you guys could come talk to me. And if you want to hear more about my story, I'm more than willing to open up to you. Um, I want to love on you just as much as you want to love on me, so please just walk with me through this, and I'm excited to meet every one of you. Thank you. Hi, guys. Um, Johnny and I are going to lead you guys in a hymn. It's called Be Thou My Vision. I would really appreciate it if you helped sing it, because I don't know all the words, but we're going to get through it. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save that thou Okay, first off, I'm really nervous. I don't talk in front of a lot of people a lot, so this is weird for me. But, um, so don't mind me reading off of notes because I have a tendency to get off track. But um, my name is Chelsea. Hi. 
Um, <laughs> I'm a sophomore. I study music education. I have two brothers, an older and a younger, and a Doberman pincher named Jenna. She's the cutest thing ever. Um, I have spent time in a lot of places. I grew up in Seattle, spent some time in Houston, Texas, spent some time in Eastern Oregon, and now I'm in Portland. So I've kind of been around a little bit. Um, my Bible character that I feel like I relate to a lot is um, the woman that was caught in adultery and brought before the people in the temple courts to be stoned. Not because I have five husbands, that's not why, but um, I, uh, I grew up in a church, a non-denominational non church. My parents were pastors. Um, I had a really awesome childhood. Like, I was so, so, so blessed. I got to experience God and his goodness and the Holy Spirit a lot, all the time, just growing up. Um, and then, right around, like, 10 to 13 years old, um, the church that I was going to, in long story short, went crazy. And I experienced a lot of hurt, a lot of hurt from the people that I considered my family and the people that I thought were supposed to be supporting me. So I went through a time where I was like, you know what, God, you're a really good God, but you've abandoned me. Thanks a lot. How dare you? That was my mindset. Um, so I went through about four years of, you know what, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to prove you wrong, God. I can do it on my own. I couldn't. <laughs> It was bad. It was not a good idea. Um, so I felt like this woman that was brought before the temple courts because according to religion, according to rules, according to law, I did not deserve forgiveness. I deserved to be completely shunned by every one of these people that are my brothers and sisters in Christ. I did not deserve forgiveness I was marked, I was completely characterized by depression, bitterness, hurt, and just a sour attitude. I just hated everything. It was bad. Um, but I came to this point in my life where I hit rock bottom, literally rock bottom. And someone who was really, really a big part of my life said, hey, let's just get a bunch of people together and pray for Chelsea. And they all came over and they prayed for me. And all of a sudden there was this turnaround in my life and I was like, oh my gosh, God did not abandon me. And that is like the one truth that I would love for you to get from this. Is that like no matter how awful you think your situation is right now, no matter how badly you want to think that God's not with you, he is. He is. He might be right behind you, and you keep like turning around and like, God, I can't see you, but he's right there. He's always right there. Sometimes it's hard to feel, but he's always there. Um, so I feel like this woman that was caught in adultery, because I didn't deserve forgiveness, not even one bit. But Jesus said, I don't condemn you. You, you could have you done all these different things, and I still would have taken your place on that cross. He took every single last bit of my guilt and shame, and it was crucified with him on that cross. And so today, I am a completely new creation. And trust me, two and a half years ago, you would not have recognized me. So I'm a completely different person, completely thanks to God. Um, so, I guess one of the other things we were supposed to talk about is um, what's a question that we come to in our life and in our journey? And one of my questions is, how do I give back to God? You know, he's done all this amazing stuff for me, and how do I give back to him? And the only thing that I can think is, be thou my vision. God, be my everything. Let every little last bit of who I am point back to you. Let everything point back to you being my goal and you being my vision. So... That's what I have for you.
Julia. Um, so my family is kind of structurally crazy. Um, I have three stepsisters from my stepfather and one from my stepmom. And I have a brother and sister, and then I have a half-brother who lives all the way in London. And I didn't actually meet him until uh, my freshman year of high school. Um, my sister, my birth sister, and my dad don't get along at all. They refuse to talk to each other. Um, so I've kind of become the messenger between them of Christmas gifts and of um, emotions, negative and positive. Um, and so it's taught me a lot about patience and forgiveness um, and love. And, it's, and I'm still learning a lot, but it's, um, it's helping me realize um, that a big part of my heart tells me that they're my family and no matter what they do, they're still my family and I'm still going to love them. Um, the person, I, I found a story in the Bible about Esau and Jacob um, and basically uh, Jacob did a lot of their brothers and um, Jacob was not very nice to Esau and he, um, he was, there was a scheme so that he could like get the larger part of the estate and, um, and he did a lot of bad things and ended up having to run away. And um, he learned that he was going to have to eventually like meet back up with Esau. And when he did, he was expecting Esau to be horribly mad at him and that they were going to fight and stuff. And then he did meet him and Esau was nothing but glad to see him. And, um, and I felt that story touched me because that's, you know, that's how I feel with my family. They could do something horrible and I'd be mad at them. But then, in the end, they're my family. So, um, Music has played a big part of my life. Um, I started playing the cello in fifth grade. And um, it started being my way of like coping with emotional struggles. Because when I play, I can't really think about anything because I have to focus on playing. So my mind clears. And like if I'm mad or sad or something and I go play the cello, I feel so much better because I just can't, I, my head is just empty. Um, and I, after coming to Warner too, I started playing and then after I'd play, I was able to pray and kind of worship in, in my own way. Um, just thanking God for like the ability to rest that way emotionally. Um, and for giving me like an outlet and something that I feel good about doing and something I feel I can show people and be happy about it. Um, and my, my big question is, um, what is God going to do with me? Um, there's been so many miracles in my life. Um, and, like, there have been bad things, but there have also been a lot of really good things. And things that, um, times that I survived that I wasn't expected to. And um, miracles in my family and everywhere. And it, um... It always makes me wonder what, why God um, gave me so many miracles and what he's going to do with me and what, what my life is for other than just life. So, thank you. What's up, guys? Uh, my name's Hakeem Bradley. Obviously, as you can see. Um, I was born and raised in Philadelphia, so I guess you could say I'm the Fresh Prince of Portland. Um, actually, please do. Um, <laughs> so, I wasn't, I wasn't raised in a Christian home by any means. I was actually raised Muslim. And I've overcome a lot of things in life. Like, I've overcome domestic violence. I've overcome fatherlessness. I've overcome homelessness, being bullied contemplating suicide as a child, like, there's a lot of things that life threw at me, but it couldn't break me. You know, I'm, I'm still standing here strong today at Warner, you know what I'm saying? And part of, part of my emotionalness is just gets to me. Um, and in my life, I'm wondering, I'm like, God, like, what, what's going on, dude? Like, you know, obviously at some point I converted, so I'm like, God, like, what, what's going on? Why is all of this happening to me? What did I do? Like, I'm a child. I'm a teenager. What am I supposed to do? And at this point, I felt like 
the Bible character Job, you know, because in that story, if you take some time to read it, you know, God allowed all these terrible things to happen in his life. He just allowed, you know, his kids to be taken away for his, 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 his like, animal stock to just, it, it was bananas. Just everything in his life fell apart. And I'm like, that's me. That's me. Like, I get it. That's me. And the question that I, I constantly face is, like, what does it mean to be wanted? You know, here come the waterworks, but... uh. <laughs> I would always ask the question, like, God, like, why doesn't my dad want me? Why don't, why don't people want to help us? You know, I get, I get tired of sleeping on the floor. I get tired of looking in the damn refrigerator, excuse my language, in the damn refrigerator, and all I see is eggs, milk, and butter. That doesn't, that doesn't make sense to me. I don't get it. But... You know, God told me, said, yo, if you, just, if you just put these on, these glasses, you get a new prescription like Michelle was talking about. If you just put these on, you will see that your father might not want you, but I do. You guys put down, you, you pick up what I'm putting down? You get it? You might not feel like nobody wants to help you, but I put clothes on your back. I made sure you, you, you ate every day. I made sure that you have a roof over your head regardless of what the situation looks like. You're blinded. I can't see y'all for crap right now. I just want you to know that. <laughs> this is what life was to me. It was just a big blur. But he said, Hakeem, if you would just shut up, if you would just pay attention and put these glasses on, you will see that your life is completely different than what it may look like. It reminds me of the scripture, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. And so, so we, before we walk by faith and not by sight, Hakeem, you may not be able to see what's going on, but if you just keep going, it'll make sense eventually. So my challenge to everybody here is maybe, maybe you got 20-20 vision. God bless you. You're lucky. Um, maybe you don't. But reality is you're blinded to a lot of things. So why don't you just shut up and put these on? And then you'll be able to see. So thank you. Woo. Um, they, I, I didn't tell them that we were going to do this. I want everybody except the guitarists. Uh, all the, the campus ministry team people, just kind of stand around here for me. As we exit, they're going to stay up here. And if you want to come talk to them for any reason, spread on out. Spread on all the way. All the way. All the way. All the way. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're good. If you want to come talk to them or let them talk to you or pray with you or anything like that, uh, they'll be here uh, until none of you are. Um, just two things before we leave. Last year, we started this segment of chapel called That's My Story. We realized that even though you know, we can bring people in to talk uh, and share stories and testimonies and all that kind of stuff, we realized, though, that there are hundreds of you who come to this school every single day who have incredible stories that can do what I'm sure these stories uh, did today. Amen? Was anybody encouraged by anything you heard today? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Um, and so if you, at any time uh, throughout this school year, if you want to share your story, uh, just talk to me, Jess, or any of these people. Um, and we'll figure out when and how you'll be able to do that.